Hey there, Kazen here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Today I have part two of my bookshelf tour. The bookshelf. Yay! Yesterday we did this top part, and I'm going to actually talk about a couple of these right now, even though it's on my husband's shelf. And then today we're going to look at all this stuff down here. But first, I just wanted to show you. Um, my husband's not a huge reader. But I still buy him books every once in a while, hoping we can buddy read them together. Or a book that I read and loved and know he would like. So this is actually the Japanese version of The Martian. After the movie, it got the movie cover. And books this thick are usually actually split into two volumes, kind of like this, these black books over here. But this was an old edition, so it was actually all still one. Then let's see how many pages. It's almost 600 pages. So, he read that and liked it, so yay. This is something I got to study and I put it on his shelf as a joke because this is Sairen no Namida, which is the Japanese translation of, where is it? Here we are, Tiffany Rice's The Siren, which is a, an erotic romance with BDSM. And I got this one because I wanted to see what the translation was like. And I actually used it to, su to study to see what the differences were. And that was a really interesting exercise. But when I was done, I thought it would be funny to put it on his shelf, thinking maybe one day he'll pick it up and wondering what the heck he got himself into. Another book I picked up for him was A Brave New World, but he didn't like the translation, unfortunately. So that only got part read. And the most recent one I got for him, because I really wanted to buddy read it, Hune Amu by Miura Shong, and it's, um, what's it called in English? The Great Passage. I have this in English on my e-reader, and I thought we could buddy read it together, which we have done in the past for a couple of things, but uh, he had already seen the movie and professed no interest in reading the book, so psh, whatever. It's here, if you should ever want it. All right, so that was just a little bit up there. Let's get down to today's part over here. All right. This is where we start getting into study and stuff. So here are a bunch of my notebooks, a bunch of loose leaf paper and all different kinds of rules. This is actually pretty cool, hold on. Oh, of course. Doing this one-handed will be fun. Okay, so I'm not gonna pull these out because it's one-handed. But um, there's some, you know, summer graph, six millimeter rule. This one's actually a schedule that you can use to study all kinds of stuff and pads. These are notebooks that I've used for studying. Some are blank, some are filled. And this is a book of medical terminology that I'm going through slowly in order to help get the Latin and Greek into my brain. There's that. Okay, you stay there. Next, oh, this is like stationary. These clear, fold these clear folders are ubiquitous. They are everywhere and they're used for everything. I even have one that's black, which is nice when I need to carry some secret translating around. They give them away as freebies. What's this from? Oh, three minute cooking. This came in a cookbook and other randomness. And these are different ways to hold paper and study stuff, study stuff, study stuff, copy paper, how exciting. And this is random paper and envelopes and things that I have here. So that. This is my current study shelf. So when I'm home for the day and I need to get my studying on, this is what I'm grabbing to go to my desk with. It has, let's see here, what do we have? Oh, we have some information about a disease a current patient has. We have, this is Kega to Byoki no Ego Ryok, and it is basically injury and disease English power, if you want to translate it quite literally. And it has all different kinds of phrases that you would use for one or the other. So I've already studied this straight through actually, but I use it for, to warm up my mouth and brain before interpreting, just reading stuff aloud and just kind of getting everything woken up so I can work. 
This is my current study book. It is Shinyuku Hito to Do Hanaska, which roughly translates as How Do You Speak with the Dying? So, happy times! I am almost. Where am I? Getting close to the end there. See that? But I've been using that, and when I study, I write down words I don't know or concepts I want to remember. I'm taking notes in this here. All right, let's get these kind of sort of back in the right place. All right. Next, random crap shelf. Yep. Next, more random crap. Next, this is a real grab bag. So I have some flute music. This is actually, uh, come on. The lesson book I used in high school and some other stuff. I have my flute now, but it's actually written into the lease that you can't practice musical instruments. So I can't play it, but I have it. I have some crocheting books because I crochet. And I've been slowly bringing these from back home. Every time I go back home, my mom's like, take more of your stuff with you. And I end up filling up my suitcase as much as I can. Here's some more crochet. This is a Japanese book, obviously. This is a major folder full of stuff for work. All different information pamphlets about different diseases, especially different cancers and stuff. This is AMP, Anatomy and Physiology. I have an English one and a Japanese one, and I'll often look at them in tandem. More craft books. This is all study stuff. Okay, guys, I have to show you which one's empty so I can show you. This is kind of amazing, hold on. So this is a notebook, right? Notebook, open it up, paper. Notebook, it is filled with loose leaf. Any old loose leaf. And so what you do is up here, there's a little thing you can push, and watch the rings. Let's see if this works. Maybe if I hold this side. Urgh, there we go. Ta-da! It opens. So you can put whatever you want in here. So I have many different kinds of loose leaf with gridded or different size lines or anything. And so you can put whatever you're studying in here, close it up, and you're ready to go. And it's so small. It's so thin. I love these things. I use them all the time. Ah, uh, more articles for work. More study material for work. Is this what I think it is? It is. All right. So this is, and I've stopped doing this recently just because it got a bit too unwieldy, but I don't trust the cloud all the time. And if there's something I want to keep forever, I want to have a hard copy. So I went through all of my Kindle highlights for all these books I read, and I had been printing them out as I went. But recently, I've had a few too many highlights, so it hasn't really worked all that well. This is a file folder, and I have a hole puncher, and these bindings that you can use. It's the same as the loose leaf um, size. It's called a B5 size, but yeah. So there's that, and more papers work and stuff. Let's go straight over, because I'm already on the floor. This is, oh, another grab bag. I was actually an urban planning major in college. Well, it was a double major, urban planning and Japanese studies. So this is for my urban planning life. These are all Japanese study books. This too, this too, this as well. How to interpret English speeches. Oh, this is cute. So there are four character idioms in Japanese. And if you don't know what they are, they make no sense. You just kind of have to straight up memorize them. So this is meant for elementary school students and each idiom, let's see if I can get this open. Hold on. There we go. Get some light. Each idiom is clearly and succinctly explained with a little picture and interesting, funny examples to help you remember them. So I got this a long time ago and it's just nice to have. Oof. Oh, and some medical reference too. Moving up. Washi tape. I have two things here. And these are random notebooks of a smaller size. This looks like a book, but it's actually a notebook. It's pretty cool. Moving up. 
We're now into red books again. A lot of Japanese books. This is manga. Medical reference. Red, red. Mostly red. I don't think I got through that one. Red, red, red. This is the obligatory. Hold on. Harry Potter. So when you're learning a second language, they say, oh, you should read Harry Potter because you've already read it in English and you know how it goes. And that's true. But the language in Harry Potter isn't necessarily all that useful in real life. So I started, found it annoying and stopped. So I could almost get rid of this. I'm not really interested in reading Harry Potter in Japanese anymore, but I have it, whatever. Next, more red or mostly red books. This is Kitchen by um, Banana Yoshimoto, Yoshimoto Banana. This was one of the first novels, I mean novella, whatever, I read in Japanese and it is absolutely wonderful. Absolutely loved it. And this, oh, here we go. This is maybe the first book I read in Japanese. It is about this girl and she falls in love with a boy, but then they end up separated through a time slip. And I was under the impression that it would be like a romance and they would figure it out in the end. But no, they did not. It's a very bittersweet ending. And that made me really mad after I spent all that time getting through the book. So I keep this one as a memory because it's full of my writing and everything else. But and it was an okay story. It just made me mad at the end. And then here, I'm not a mad scientist. For the fountain pens, these are all inks from Goulet inks. Oops, not that one. Little ink samples that I use along with other kinds of fountain pen stuff. And that's it. We're done. We're back up here. We're done. Yay. So this has been a look at my odd, weird bookcase. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions about anything you see, um, if you've read any of these books, if you want to know more about any of these books, please let me know. And yeah. So thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.